In this lesson, we're going to go over the unprotected category of speech referred to as inciting imminent lawless action. So if we're thinking about this form of unprotected speech, if we're looking at a constitutional law fact pattern and we see the government come along and they're trying to regulate speech because the content of the speech involves violence or some form of unlawful action, we have to consider whether this speech being regulated constitutes inciting imminent lawless action. Because if the speech constitutes inciting imminent lawless action, well, that speech is unprotected. It's basically outside the scope of the free speech clause of the First Amendment, which means the government can come in and regulate that area. However, of course, if the speech does not constitute a category of unprotected speech, meaning the speech is protected under the First Amendment and the government's trying to regulate the content of speech that is protected under the First Amendment, that means we're generally going to apply strict scrutiny and the government is not going to prevail. That statute, that regulation is going to be struck down in violation of the free speech clause of the First Amendment in most cases if we're applying strict scrutiny. So what we're trying to determine here, again, if we see the government is coming along and they're trying to regulate speech because the content of the speech involves violence or some other form of unlawful action, we have to determine whether that speech being regulated is unprotected speech or protected speech. And one of the first categories we would think about in that case, if it involves violence or other unlawful action, is the category of inciting imminent lawless action. So what type of speech actually does constitute inciting imminent lawless action? Well, we have to look at the Supreme Court decision in Brandenburg v. Ohio. Pursuant to this Supreme Court decision, the government cannot prohibit speech that advocates for unlawful action or violence unless such advocacy is directed to inciting or producing imminent lawless action and is likely to incite or produce such action. Consequently, we get this test that involves basically like three elements that we're going to talk about. Likelihood, imminence, and intent. Okay, but before we jump into the test and some of the facts from Brandenburg v. Ohio, I think it's important to take a step back and think about this from a big picture for a second. So, if we're thinking about speech that advocates for violence or other forms of unlawful action, it's important to recognize that the starting point rule is actually this speech is protected under the First Amendment. Generally, a person can go out in the United States and talk about violence and other unlawful action as much as they want, right? This is protected speech under the First Amendment. You can produce movies that are violent, you know, mainstream movies and books and TV shows and whatever, ever, you know, music, whatever form of media we're in, right? Generally, these things can advocate for violence and it's protected speech. It does not fall within this category of inciting imminent lawless action. You know, people can make speeches at protests and, and you know, mainstream media and can basically a person can express ideas that are favorable towards violence and unlawful action. This is protected speech under the First Amendment. This is our starting point rule. The problem becomes or when this type of speech basically rises beyond the level of protected speech and starts to become unprotected speech where the government can actually come in and start to restrict it. Because if the speech is protected, generally the government cannot come in and regulate or restrict that speech. This is why you have mainstream movies and books and TV shows that involve violence and other unlawful action. You know, that is protected speech. The government cannot come in and prohibit that type of speech, right, without violating the First Amendment. However, 
Again, if the speech rises beyond that, basically beyond mere advocacy of violence, and actually comes into the category of inciting imminent lawless action or violence, that's where the speech can actually become unprotected, and that's when the government can come in and start to restrict it. And the most obvious example of this would be like criminal solicitation statutes, right, where a person is coming and they're trying to, you know, persuade another person to commit a crime on their behalf, right? We know what criminal solicitation looks like. And that would be kind of, and we know, right, across the United States, almost all jurisdictions are going to have criminal solicitation statutes. And the reason the government can come in and regulate in those areas is because that's inciting imminent lawless action. That's unprotected speech. The government can come in and say you're not allowed to solicit others to commit crimes on your behalf because that rises beyond mere advocacy of violence or lawless action. That's different than making a movie that you know, romanticizes violence. That's actually trying to convince another person to commit a crime on your behalf. So that's kind of the jump we're looking for between protected speech that advocates for violence and unprotected speech that's really inciting imminent lawless action. And this comes from Brandenburg v. Ohio. So we can talk about Brandenburg v. Ohio a little bit and then break down the test that we get from Brandenburg. In Brandenburg v. Ohio, we basically have an Ohio criminal syndicalism statute that prohibits advocating for violence as a means of accomplishing industrial or political reform. So we have this Ohio criminal syndicalism statute on the books. This is in the late 60s, 1969. And we have our defendant, Brandenburg, who's a really unsavory character, a morally repugnant person. He's an admitted Ku Klux Klan leader, and he's actually convicted under this statute because, among other things, he gives this public speech that ends up being broadcasted where he says the following. And again, this is a quote directly from Brandenburg. In this case, Brandenburg v. Ohio, this is not me talking. This is what he said. This is the quote. Brandenburg stated in this speech, if our government continues to suppress the white Caucasian race, it's possible there might have to be some revenge taken. Okay, so not the most articulate individual in the world, but that's his statement. Basically, it's possible there might have to be some revenge taken. And based on this statement and a bunch of other stuff he does, he's convicted under this Ohio criminal, criminal syndicalism statute, and he's sentenced to one to 10 years in prison. Of course, he challenges this. It goes to the Supreme Court. He challenges the constitutionality of this Ohio criminal syndicalism statute, gets to the Supreme Court, and we get the decision in Brandenburg v. Ohio, where basically the Supreme Court holds, since the statute, by its words and as applied to Brandenburg, purports to punish mere advocacy of violence and unlawful action, it is in violation of the free speech clause of the First Amendment. Basically, they throw out his conviction and this statute gets struck down. And the whole point that gets raised in Brandenburg is kind of what we opened with. What the court is essentially saying is this type of speech that Brandenburg is making. Thank you so much for watching this video preview of our Legal Education Accelerator Program or LEAP for short. If you would like to see the conclusion of this video and gain full access to our entire 1L and 2L video library, integrated outlines, streamable audio versions, additional practice exams with explanations, and much more, we invite you to head over to our website and join the thousands of law students who have already enrolled. To get started with your no-risk 
free trial today, simply click the link in the description box below or visit www.studicata.com forward slash leap. My name is Serena and I'm currently a law student at South Texas College of Law, Houston. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Shiva and I'm currently a law student at Southwestern. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle um, and I am a first year student at South Texas College of Law, Houston. Um, I used the Studicata study video series last semester to help me prepare mostly for contracts um, and I actually made an A plus in contracts last semester which I greatly dedicate to the Studicata videos. By using Studicata to help me prepare for my final exam, I was able to score the highest grade out of my class on the final and even have my uh, essay distributed as the model answer. Not to mention I had done quite poorly on the midterm and was struggling throughout the whole course of the semester, understanding the material and keeping up with lectures. Because of the Studicata video lectures, I was able to go into my exams with a feeling of confidence. I didn't have to worry about what the rules of law were or how I was going to organize my answer to an essay question. I would absolutely recommend the Studicata series and their online course materials to anyone. Um, I think that they are not like um, professor lectures that you might find online or other outside study materials that you may encounter. Um, I think that the Studicata videos really focus on not only ensuring that you understand the material that you're going to encounter on your final, um, but they also help you to understand kind of the best method for test taking and they really break down how to approach each problem and the best ways to tackle certain methods on testing um, and I think that's really important and I think it's really special. I don't see that anywhere else. Um, in any of the other online resources that I've found. So I would certainly recommend Sudakata to anyone who is studying in law school right now. Um, good luck on your studying and you're going to do great. I would definitely uh, recommend Sudakata to anybody watching this video. Uh, give it a chance. I'm sure, I'm positive that you will love it, uh, that you will get a lot out of it, uh, and that you will be happy that you gave it a chance. Uh, I definitely am. I know I will be using uh, Studicata in the future. And I cannot thank Studicata enough for getting me through my first semester of law school. I will definitely, definitely continue to watch the Studicata video lectures throughout my law school career, and I highly recommend that any future or current law student do the same.